Hello, this is Triad Media Presents, and I'm Frank Beecham. This is a series of programs featuring people in arts and entertainment who are dealing with the temporary lack of live performance venues. This is a major issue for many artists. Our guest today is David Ippolito. David is known as that guitar man from Central Park. He is a musician, actor, playwright, and has recorded nine albums. David has a very strong fan base, and we're going to talk to him today about how he is connecting with those fans in this era of the pandemic. Uh, welcome, David. Uh, Hi, I'd like Frank. to begin by asking you how you're doing, and uh, are you surviving okay? You know, the answer to that is um, uh, when people during this pandemic say, David, how are you? My answer is usually, I don't know but I think I'm doing well. And uh, are you missing the connection with the audience? Oh, man. Um, oh, yes. Uh, you know, the, the personal uh, connection, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm a little bit ahead of the game, uh, a little bit ahead of a, a lot of artists because um, I started doing uh, live streaming uh, with some, with a platform called Concert Window years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I first started having guests come on, to, to the artist, to every single person, they would go, holy smokes, this is so weird. Because you would end a song, or you would, and, and there, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing. It's you and a little tiny lens. And, um, and it takes some getting used to, but it's, you can't adapt to it, because I did. And, um, and I mean, there's nothing like that connection, but well, we'll, t we'll talk about it, but I've been at it for a while. So yes, I miss it, but I'm kind of used to the fact that the entire crowd of sweet people is just through this little window. Right. So uh, you are doing both free and paid streaming. And I, 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 I'd like for you to explain how that works, uh, when the fans tune in, and exactly what you're doing. It's, yeah, again, I, you know, people, I hope you don't get tired of hearing me say this, but because I've been saying it for years, I feel like the luckiest man alive. Um, uh, I, first of all, my career, <laughs> my, I'm a playwright who, who's made a living for the past almost 30 years as a singer-songwriter in Central Park. Um, I haven't had a pay stub job, Frank, you know that, for, for 28 years. Um, I write songs and I sing them for people. And it's just this incredibly unique thing. I'm a 21st century troubadour, almost by accident. Um, but about, oh God, five years ago, Christine Lavin came to me with this thing called Concert Window. And she said, oh, David, you got to try it. You got to do it. It's, and it was, it was a business model that had to fail. Um, eventually. Um, but it was a wonderful thing. And it was great for me because my live gig was one day a weekend. And then if it rained, I could do this concert window thing and everybody right. would show up. Well, concert window went belly up last year. And, um, and so everybody's, you know, there were a lot of concert window refugees. And so I found a company it was a startup, young guys, great guys out of San Francisco uh, called Crowdcast. So with the help of a couple of friends, um, we figured out how to use Crowdcast to stream to Patreon, which I'm sure you're familiar with, right? Right. Um, and Patreon is really just a, a gateway. It's just a way to collect money from people. They take a cut, but it's a way to give patrons um, exclusive content. Right. So... They pay, you know, I set it, the way I set mine up um, is exactly like Central Park. There are different tiers that different level patrons are supposed to get different things. But, you know, when I'm in Central Park, if somebody puts a dollar in the guitar case or somebody drops a 50 in the guitar case, they're all hanging out and getting the same music. So that's the way I set up Patreon. So for $5 a month or $100 a month, everybody gets the same shit. Right. So, so we set it up that way. Now, then the pandemic hit. 
my idea was to just do um, just do Crowdcast on the off days because I have a lot of fans in Europe that can't get to Central Park. A lot of fans all over the country that can't get to Central Park. So I would do Central Park on Saturday. Sunday I would do this online thing just for the patrons. Then the pandemic hit. So I asked all the patrons if it was cool with them, if since they're paying for it really, if I opened it up to the general public because I felt people really needed this. And every, to the person, they all said, absolutely yes. So I started doing live streaming three days a week, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it was open to everybody. I would post the links on Facebook, on you, on, a, on a Twitter. You know. Twitter, by the way, is a very mean and weird universe. But so that is, again, that, so when the pandemic hit, people started showing up for this, this gig I was calling It's Just Us. Um, Crowdcast. And again, we parted ways well. Uh, I wish them nothing but the best. But they were young. They were using a lot of third-party um, platforms. And they were suddenly in over their heads. Because I've been telling everybody, not only is COVID-19 hurting human beings, but it's actively trying to break the Internet. And um, so they, they were in over their heads. And, um, and I would be ready to go live and suddenly things weren't working. Right. So, so what we did was I parted ways with, with Crowdcast. Oh, by the way, Crowdcast is also, you know, it, it's, we pay for that stuff. We pay for right. the streaming hours sure. and the different sure. levels of restreaming to different platforms and all kinds of bells and whistles. Anyway, so, but then um, I noticed on Patreon that there were two ways to connect through Crowdcast or YouTube Live. And I, I'm making this up as I go along, but I knew nothing about YouTube Live. I have a YouTube channel I pay no attention to, and yet I've got, you know, 1,300 subscribers. Right, right. So now I'm using OBS, this free platform, which I was going to show you all this stuff. I'll walk around the apartment and I'll see if I can show you. Okay. For anybody who's watching, um, Frank had asked about the gear. So I, I set up this thing in OBS where I can show. It's, it's amazing. I can hit a button and I can show video. I can show still shots. I can show, I can play music. I can. Um, so it's like a broadcast switcher. Exactly. Exactly. So like right. right now I would be saying, and this is the camera setup and I would hit a hot key and I would show you a shot of the camera. Or I would say, we're doing this really interesting thing where I'm playing music live. The audience is shooting selfies of themselves singing along and then they send me the video and I drop it in so that we're all in the video performing together live. It's just after the fact. Right, um, right. So I took so, that concept and I started doing it with artists where like Teresa Reynolds is in Indiana. I would ask her to sing along with the song as I'm playing it. She'd have a great time. She'd shoot it. Then she'd send me her video. I'd drop it in Final Cut. We would create this, this new thing. And right. um, we've had, it, the first one we did, we had Peter Yarrow, um, John Cryer, Don Scardino, Christine Lavin, um, the actor Jeff Daniels. Everybody sent video clips. Um, and so I've been creating these things. It's, it's, it's kind of fascinating. Right. Now, you are at home. Is that right. correct? In a yeah. studio in your home. Yes. Do you have anyone there helping you? Or is this, uh, do you normally do these things with a remote uh, producer director? Well, see, that's again, it's really interesting. Um, I am not a tech guy. I'm a, I'm a songwriter. But by necessity, a lot of us have had to learn this shit. You know, we, we, we've had to learn Final Cut or Photoshop or GarageBand right. or whatever. And, um, and so when this happened, I, my learning curve was just... <laughs> um, so I started this completely alone. 
um, and a lot of trial and error. But again, the people, music lovers are just the sweetest people. They put up with things that aren't working, and, you know, until you get them working. And, um, and they know me. You know, I'll always say, if I'm doing this, can you imagine what the kids that got A's are doing? Um, so, so I started this by myself. Now, Christine Lavin had asked me to do, uh, to be a, an artist in the Greenwich Village Folk Festival about two months ago, three months ago, right. two months ago. And um, it was the first live online gig they were doing. And there was this young guy out of Detroit named Brandon O'Sullivan, who was their producer. He was running the show and he had guys, you know, other guys on different computers and he was doing the sound check. And um, as with everything, you know, people don't have their settings wrong or people have different things hooked up wrong. And so we're doing this sound check the half hour before and it's like a fire drill. And I'm watching this young guy. He's got the temperament. And the know-how, it's like, you know, just like the guy in an emergency who's just saying, go in this window, do that calmly, telling them what to turn on, what to turn off. And um, so we, and by accident, I had been using, the technology that I had been using, the OBS technology and this rig that I set up with the camera and the transformer, the audio transformer, Zoom was recognizing that as as my output, my stream. Right. So the video and audio were between 10 and 20 times better than everybody else's. So I talked to Brandon afterwards and I said, man, if, if I paid you, you know, per hour to show up and be the Ed McMahon and the producer in the control room for my gigs, would you do it? And he's absolutely. And when he got familiar with the show, it's just us. He said to me, David, I'm doing this for a lot of people. I don't see anybody doing what you're doing. Um, and I was doing it alone. So now, um, with him in the control room, Frank, it's like I get to just sit back. because Oh, because this is what happened now. Um, it was really Brandon's idea that... I would leave it open to the general public on Wednesday and Saturday, but because the patrons are actually supporting this thing, that they should have their own gig. Right. But he would use this technology to stream to Zoom, and, um, and that way he could, he's in the control room, right? He's in the control seat. He can open up the uh, audience so that they can hear each other, they can see each other. In between songs, they can laugh, they can applaud, they can, if anybody has a comment, they can raise their hand, they can ask for a song. Um, we had Gretchen Cryer in the uh, chat room last time. She had a great idea about the election. We highlighted her, she took over the screen. Last week, George Wurzbach was my first musical guest. So we split the screen just like we are now. George and I talked for a while about the old Red Lion days and then I disappear and the screen goes to George, who was in Brooklyn. And so all of this is occurring remotely. Right. Brandon is in Detroit. Yes. So all of this is connected through the internet. Yes. Uh, on a, a, a production basis, and then it's fed out of Detroit again right. uh, as a finished product. Is that right. correct? Yes. It's, it's, um, it's, you know, it's got its challenges. Uh, we're about, I would say, you know, one Christmas away from the developers coming up with the tech uh, that is going to make it possible for me to play along with a drummer. We're not there. Um, even with OBS and the, and the uh, you know, all the high speed and stuff. And why are you not? If the singing can work together why can't a drama it, see it really doesn't um what's what's happening is um when i create these videos they're singing with me live i don't hear it i'm i'm just singing and it's if i could show oh, damn i wish we had this thing set up with the original thing because i was going to show you all of it. you know what i'll tell you what let me see if i can move the laptop okay 
first of all, I'll show you. This is the um, this is the setup. This is just a a, a Sony Handycam, high right. definition Sony Handycam, and that's that little Beach Tech transformer underneath, so I could use an external microphone. Right. Right. right? Then there's my little professional set, and then um, I just use the setup that I use in Central Park, um, just a you know powered mixer, right? Um, and my little harmonizing uh, little Garfunkel pedal and a chorus, right? So that's just right. my regular analog thing that feeds into the transformer, right? Then right. I use. This external speaker just as a monitor right. for myself, right? Then, okay, let's see. Um, all the stuff I was going to show you. Um, all right, so let's see. Guess I don't need this anymore. Guess I don't need this. Um, okay, so this is. Uh, OBS. Right. Okay. Right. Now, um, what I do is I just create uh, hotkeys for each of the things in OBS that right. I want to stream out. Um, right. Oh, I, I missed one little step. In between, <laughs> there's this Black Magic um, Transformer. So it comes out, it's a HDMI, it comes out of the camera, right? Right. Into here, and that's what feeds into OBS. Right, got you. Okay, now, in OBS, I hope you can see this. Yeah, um, I can see it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, let's say, um, that's, my, that's my set, okay? Then, what I'll do is... Um, if I want to show, all right, I was going to tell you, George Wurzbach was our guest, right? Right. And this will just go out on, on everybody's computer. Um, and then I hit my little home button on the back. And then um, I was going to say, all right, here we go. Uh, this was when George was the guest. So I would be live here. Right. And this would pop up. And there's George and I, right? And then... Um, let's see. What else can I show you here? So, oh, and this was what I had set up. I would be live here, and then I was going to show you the camera, the gears. Right? Right. Then but, this but, is um, the Zoom audience uh, from last Sunday, part of it, um, that Brandon gets to control. Um, he gets to mute or highlight. Um that's Brandon, by the way. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, then, um, one second. Um, if I, for instance, uh, want to show, oh, oh, let me give you an example of one of those um, one of those videos that we did. Um, let's do. A, I did a clip of one here. Oh, wait a minute. You're not going to be able to hear it. Um. Now, the, the, the person that we're seeing with you on the screen is being controlled by Brandon. No, 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 no. Um, this is before I met Brandon. Um, so what I would do is this is actually a live. When you see me, this is me playing live. And then this is Teresa in Indiana. And David Ross in New Jersey, and everybody else, everybody else that's watching the show is just singing along with me live, right? Uh, this woman you. is in New York. Gotcha. She's in Germany. Um, she's in New York. Um, he's in Jersey. Now they're all just singing with me live, but then they send me their videos, um, so that later on, I'll create. In fact, let me see if I just recorded that, if I can share that with you. Um, hang on a second. No, I guess I can't. I guess I can't. Okay, um, but I, I, I got the idea. I got okay. the basic idea. So uh, that's quite interesting. 
Um, now, when you are uh, working your audio levels remotely, are you able to handle the uh, levels? Let's say if, if your microphone is, uh, is too hot, can I change the levels in Detroit, say? Um, no, what usually happens is, um, is, well, first of all, it's trial and error. So we got it pretty much where everything is set. But if somebody says, hey, David, you know, I think your guitar is too loud in the mix. Um, I'll just, I'll just reach down to the, um, to there, you know, I you. I'll okay. keep it as, I always keep things as simple as possible. And so basically what I'm hearing in that monitor is what's going out into the camera. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So, so, and actually one of the really, let me, sh here, I can probably share something with you that you can actually hear. One second. I'm not a, um, I'm not a cruise shippy kind of guy. I'm a, you know, <laughs> I'm a guitar and vocal and, you know, wood on wood kind of person. Um, but, um, um, once in a while, like I just, Chris Lavin just asked me to do a, um, uh, submit a, a song for some project that she's got, a holiday thing. And so I sent the track to, um, to George Rosbach and to Chris Tedesco, who's probably one of the finest musicians on the planet. And, um. And so they're sending their tracks to me and I'm just going to mix them here, right? But what I'll do here is I'll create uh, sometimes a track and I just put it on my iPhone and then I connect the iPhone right to that analog powered mixer and then see if this works. Um, And so then what I'll do is I'll just play along with it from here. Right. And and it goes out it goes out as a perfect mix to the to OBS. And so people are watching what they think is all of us playing in the room together almost. Right. It's, right. It's it's really it's there are so many there are so many ways. Um this is kind of, all right, this is kind of the, the, the basis of what I'm doing, Frank, in a nutshell, is that, is that nice people are finding new ways to be nice in this pandemic, and kind people are finding new ways to be kind. Shitty people are finding really new ways to be shitty. Just go to Twitter. And selfish people are finding all new ways to be selfish. Mean people are finding new ways to be mean. But creative people are finding new ways to be creative and fun people are finding new ways to have fun. So a lot of this stuff, it's, if you're willing to fail, if you're willing to fuck up, if you're willing to just make mistakes, this is all possible. Uh, so l let me ask you, now, you, you have progressed through a lot of different learning experiences here. What, what, now that you've got a few months under your belt, what have you learned? What's the big thing you've learned? Um, well, basically what I just shared is that, um, is that creative people are finding new ways to be creative. Um, um, but I mean, in this case, what have you learned about the process that you're doing to make it better? I mean, what, what mistakes were you making in the beginning that you don't make anymore? Well, the, all right. The first, the first thing um, is, is what you started this entire conversation with. Um, getting used to, getting acclimated with the lack of contact. Um, right. 
um, just creating it, just knowing that they're there. That's something that takes, and it just takes doing it. Um, that's probably the first thing. The second thing is, um, and again, it happened by accident. The, um, that, I'm like, a, I'm like Sid Bernstein, and you knew Sid. I, Sid never made a good business decision in his life. He was, you know, and so as a business person, I'm, my brain doesn't work that way. But, but creating these videos, giving people something to do that they're a part of, where if I'm, I did a, I did a cover of, um, of um, Put a Little Love in Your Heart and asked everybody to dance and sing. And they all sent me videos. Frank, it gives people, number one, something to do that's fun. And it gives, um, it gives them a reason then, this is the business end of it, to come back. Right, right. And to bring so, friends. Hey, yeah, I'm in this video. Okay, so we're in a, still a bit of a novel stage in the sense that this is new. How do you feel if this thing goes on for a long time? Will it be sustainable? Uh, we'll have to keep adapting. Um, like, okay, uh, you and I have to have a conversation because, again, this is the creative process. Um, um, I've done for the past I don't know how many years something we call the something annual year-end concert. We call it that because right. we don't know how many we've done. It's been so many. At Merkin Concert Hall at the Kaufman Center. Right, right. It's 500 seats every December. It's a, it's a party, it's a tradition. It's, it's the same core musicians on stage that right. are just family, right? And everybody knows it. And the audience is family and they know it. Right. Well, this year, um, as soon as well, I knew I knew at the beginning. Once my once my cons, once my season in Central Park was canceled, that's one hundred percent of my income gone. Right. Um, I approach these things by saying the same words in a different way. I can say, "What am I gonna do now?" Or I can say, "What am I gonna do now?" And so, so here we are talking, right, um, about this Patreon thing and about um, doing all this online stuff. Well, when Merkin, when, once I, ha I, ha I kind of suspected this would be the case, but once Radio City canceled the spectacular. Right. You knew I, you probably couldn't do Merkin. We knew that was that, that was it was gone. But I had already been talking to some of the guys about. And I was going to negotiate with the Kaufman Center about how we could do something on that stage because it's an orchestral stage. You can land a helicopter on that stage. And I thought we could do something on that stage and stream it live. Um, and then with Brandon, the kid in Detroit, he's a kid. He's 33 years old. But he, um, he has ways of, of creating like breakout rooms after the show for people to hang out in. So we were going to do something special in that way, but there's no reason it has to be in a 500 seat theater, right? Right. So when I was talking to you about the triad, um, and you said that they now have this digital setup, and I actually did a gig there for a friend of mine um, last year, I think. In, I think it was in 2019, might have been the year before, and I saw that control room they have, and I thought. Maybe we could do the year-end concert from the triad because they've got a control room and they've got the kind of feed that would handle a thousand people, a few thousand people um, in the, uh, and we've got the audience now. I mean, and, and they've got we, the streaming, uh, yeah, the ability and, 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 to do charge a pay per uh, view screen streaming. So. Okay. So, I mean, that, but that's the kind of thing we got to talk about because, um, this gig, we have to we have to be creative on the fly. Um, I don't know that we'll get our drummer to get down here from Buffalo. I don't know that I know Teresa won't make it in from Indiana, but um, we'll be able to create things like the videos I'm creating um, 
to show even after the fact. Um, right. And then we can have break we're, out. We're, uh, we're getting short on time. I want to okay. just wrap this up with asking you, obviously we've talked about your music, but you're a playwright and you're also an actor. And I assume all of that stuff has kind of disappeared. Is there a way that you're adapting your other talents to a streaming? I've got to say, oh, I wish we had, I wish we had had that thing set up right. Um, but that's part of the, it's part of the adventure. It's part of the process. Um, as an actor, Frank, I haven't pursued acting in years. If somebody drops a, a, a script in my lap, I still know what to do with it. But I learned years ago, I, I'm a creator. Uh, much, no, but much you've more been in. I'm, you were in uh, the play uh, recently. I know that I saw. So you were performing in, in the play, but I guess more as a musician. Well, that was a uh, music. That was a musical, and it was kind right. of semi-biographical. So it was, I, I guess what I'm really asking you is: Do you see a way to do these musicals or your plays on video as well? Actually, you know what we 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 wound up. Um, with, in fact, let me hear, uh, I, as a playwright, uh, I wrote a play called The Green Room, and, right. um, and we did, uh, an online reading of it with, um, with, I mean, all-star cast. We also did Jack Flew with Tony Award winners. We had Chuck Cooper in it, Austin Pendleton, um, in it, um, we did, uh, here, Um, we did online readings of these, um, and we did them for free, and we did them for fun and to see what was possible. Um, this is from uh, this is from the play The Green Room. Um, right. uh, so what I think is going to happen now, my my feeling is that is that, and it's I'm talking to some producers about it, uh, is that we could possibly perform one of these plays, either, I hope it's The Green Room, live, possibly from a Broadway house, because Broadway theater owners are not theater people, they're real estate people. And they are sitting on empty real estate. Right. Um, so if we could negotiate with the Carpenters Unions and everybody else and, and the theater to do a live production in a Broadway house, to be streamed live, then we could possibly open a Broadway show when there is no Broadway. Right, um, right. And it's 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 got some people really buzzing. Um, also because both well, the green room is only a five character play, so it's infinitely um, producible. Right, and it's, right. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's the kind of play that um, again I'm just completely gratified. Um, John Lithgow and Alfred Molina sent me emails. I'm name dropping now, but I'm, they sent me emails saying that they love this play and they think it should be on Broadway. Um, uh, Don Scardino, uh, actually John Lithgow's son, Ian, uh, did the uh, reading, the last reading. Um, so that's, I'm kind of excited about those possibilities. Uh, right, right. So we're in a time of major reinvention here. There's Absolutely. No question about it. And uh, well, David, I think we've got to wrap this up. It's about okay. a half hour. But uh, it's really been great talking with you. And um, I'd like to check in later on and see how this is all working out. Because well, let me it's ask really you, just, a great experiment. Just do a plug. Because um, uh, there's still Saturday, Wednesday and Saturday are still open to everyone. Um, so, uh, and I can send you the invite for the private one. Because that's where I can actually show some things that might be a little copyright sketchy. <laughs> right, know? right, um, gotcha. But uh, on Wednesday, 4 Eastern, and we're doing it at 4 because then it's 1 o'clock on the West Coast and it's nighttime in Europe, but it's doable. Right, um, right. So 4 o'clock Eastern on Wednesday, 4 o'clock Eastern on Saturday. And if anybody's watching this and they, they want to join us, it is always just go to thatguitarman.com. Um, right. or just Google my name, but thatguitarman.com, and there's always a fresh link to the next show. Uh, and then 
join me at Patreon. Because <laughs> that's right, right. I got it. In. I got it. You know. Thank you, David. I appreciate it very much, man. And you take Frank, care. Thanks all so right? much for asking. Okay. Take care. All right, bye bye.